Hello and welcome to this video on the design of Disgaea 4. Um, most of the Disgaea games are obviously similar so uh, most of the concepts will apply to the other ones as well but the game I've been playing is the fourth one and I will do as I did on the Uncharted video as well I will be talking over uh, video mostly um, maybe I will jump into Photoshop and draw some but um, I'd love to get feedback on if you wanted um, sort of the more um, interesting to look at video or if you want more uh, sort of theoretical stuff and drawing in Photoshop and things like that uh, but let's get to it so if you haven't played any of the sort of Disgaea's or Final Fantasy Tactics uh, the basic layout is uh, essentially a grid um, with squares and it's an isometric setting and what every level is about is killing all of the enemies um, so you have your base tile here and when you activate it you get to choose from your um, active characters you can have inactive characters as well uh, basically in a sort of storage unit um, just to make it easier to select from your uh, active ones so you basically pick them and then you uh, you get to move and do an action every turn so uh, in this case I have my uh, sort of overpowered party because this is one of the very first levels um, so she can move anywhere uh, on the map here um, all of the red ones um, I will actually go back a bit and try to pause it at the right moment so you move and then you click again and uh, whoops double clicking gives you the other sh another full screen one uh, but yeah I went into special attacks uh, your normal attack basically just hits the guy in front of you and then you have your special attacks and you can see the uh, different AOEs at the bottom here so you can see SP used which is mana uh, power which is F times 370 um, I actually ha don't really understand all the sort of stats and numbers in this game because there are a ton of them um, element this is light or holy or something um, and you can see here the range so these two blue or the four blue squares will be um, taking damage so as you can see here they're all standing in a straight line which means this is not going to do damage to any of them um, uh, double clicking again I should have used uh, media player uh, this is media player classic which obviously double clicking uh, expands the screen um, yeah so as you can see here I have 9 to dispatch meaning um, uh, I started with 10 because I already used one um, but what this means is that you only get to use 10 characters on this level um, if you want to you can bring one out and let's say you have your, your medic down here you can bring her out and you can heal and she can go back into the base panel but you can only have 10 active characters at any point and if one of them dies you don't get to bring out another one um, only if you get an, um, a character who's alive back into the base panel do you get to um, use another one um, so yeah again my characters are pretty OP for this level um, and as you can see here as well um, you basically move and then you set your orders uh, again go into the uh, special menu choose a special attack he has a better line one and then when you choose execute from the menu they perform the attacks meaning you can do uh, sort of combo attacks with other characters and things like that um, so yeah they move in they, and then you end the turn as well which means that the enemy gets to move then you get your next turn etc um, so on really narrow levels like this one as you can see there are only two paths uh, one square wide um, as you can see the select uh, square it's basically one unit of space meaning it can contain um, either a block, a chest, an enemy or a character 
Um, but yeah, in this case, I'm just going back because there are um, sort of tre treasure maps which spawn crates on previous finished maps. As you can see, this one is terrible. Um, so this guy is really particular in that your characters can level to uh, 9999 um, and your stats can become like several million um, meaning 50 EXP isn't going to give you much um, I'm not sure yeah he's level 5000 something um, but yeah in this case I'm going to show you um, throwing and lifting um, because this is um, basically a sort of fundamental moving system in this Gaia. As you can see on this map, uh, it might not be super obvious, but there's actually a gap between the uh, row of terrain up here and the one down here. And you can't, uh, well, unless you're a special character, you can't move through enemies, meaning that you will be doing a lot of throwing to get to. Uh, places where you want to go. Um, this is actually in the item world where uh, you don't have to kill all enemies. Instead you just have to reach the um, reach the exit. Uh, there are a couple of different exits, but yeah. Um, so here what I'm doing is I bring out my uh, dude here and then I pick up Valvatores, which is the main character. Now he's level 9000. Um, so I pick him up and because he hasn't moved um, you can basically throw him somewhere and he can move from there. Um, so depending on your sort of combos you will be able to get uh, characters to basically any point of the uh, playing field the first turn which is really important in uh, stuff like item world. In the, uh, the sort of uh, story missions throwing isn't as important because most of the maps are laid out with great height differences because you can't really throw um, up very high but you can throw across uh, really far. Um, I'm not sure if I'm actually showing the stat here but um, people have different throwing stats basically so my uh, big armored guy down here has a lot of throwing um, the warrior guy has a lot, but this is a thief, so she can't throw very far. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I'm lifting a uh, thief, then I'm lifting again, and I'll just keep bringing out... Um, you can basically stack these um, as m far as you have characters, essentially. Meaning that once you start throwing, which I'm doing here, um, once you start throwing, you can basically uh, line up a bunch of characters and throw them all across the map. But because this counts as a, an action, the throwing one, you can only attack with the person at the very end, uh, which makes it less useful if the opponents are of a decent level, basically. Because what you'll end up with is nine uh, nine uh, units standing out in the field where they can be killed and then one guy at the end killing one enemy um, or several enemies with AOE attacks obviously. Um, but yeah, as you can see here I'm throwing onto the uh, exit panel which advances to the next stage. Um, and as you can see in this level there are uh, different colored blocks uh, in this case it's red, green, yellow and blue. And then there are different colored tiles as well, which I will get to in the next video. But as you can see in this one, you can lift um, any blocks that aren't connected to other blocks of the similar colors. You can lift up and you can throw them. And what then happens is it destroys uh, all the blocks of the same color um, that are connected. So if you just throw two blocks together, it only breaks those two. Um, it also does a bit of damage, like fall damage to the enemies, but you shouldn't really be counting on that. Um, in this level it's more of a gimmick. Uh, but then you have maps like this one. This is also in the item world, 
um, which means that all of the levels are randomized, which means that you can get really, uh, really difficult combinations of uh, tiles. So in this case, the green panel ones are no melee, the blue ones are death blow, meaning that if you're standing on one of those and you take um, any point of damage, you will die instantly. And then no tower, which basically means no uh, stacking, like I did in the throwing example. Um, so yeah, I'll just be moving around a bit here and killing stuff, I think. Ah, right, I'm pointing. If you're pointing towards the um, the actual blocks, like this one is standing on the green tile, which means that uh, the red box's um, ability gives its power to the green tiles. So if you lifted up the the red block and threw it onto a red tile, it would give that ability to the red tiles instead. And if you break um, if you break the red block, it will change the color of the um, the grid that it's standing on to red as well. And this will do uh, more damage. I'm not sure if I included one of those examples where I uh, chain the uh, geo effect is what it's called. So basically let's say you have a blue block standing on a green tile and then you have the red block as well. So if you break the red one it will change all the green ones to red and it will also do damage to the blue ones meaning that now all of the red and green tiles will become blue and then you can have this uh, I'm not sure what they're called actually, but this basically removes all of the geo effects from the map. So if you change first uh, all the green to red, then all the ones to blue, and then you break this one, it will remove all of them. Um, increasing your bonus meter, uh, doing some damage, as well as removing any uh, sort of difficult um, effects. Uh, the reason why this works amazingly well is because the um, exit can be covered, as you can see in this case, by a, a gatekeeper or something. But the exit gate can never have um, a tile under it. It's always neutral. Meaning that if you get something like um, all the tiles on the map have no throwing, invincibility, uh, strong enemies and stuff like that, it doesn't matter because you only have to get to the gatekeeper and then you only have to run into the exit to finish the map. So regardless of how difficult your geo combinations become, uh, you can still always win because the um, the final enemy can never be standing on on a tile, basically. Um, yeah, these are only level 500 and I'm again level several thousand. Um, this guy is of the special character that can actually run through enemies. Um, so enemies don't matter to him, it's only about how far he can move. Um, yeah, this is another example. This map actually teaches you about uh, fusions and magic change. And what this is, is you can basically transform your uh, cat here into a weapon. So instead of having his uh, pairing knife, he will get the sardine thief pistol. Um, and different uh, classes of... Uh, these are basically the monster type heroes. You have humans and then you have monsters. Monsters can become weapons and humans can wield weapons. Um, yeah, He turns into a weapon, giving you extra special powers, both depending on um, that you have a monster and that you have um, yeah, the magic change and the weapon. So, um, then you also have uh, fusion which turns two monster enemies into one big monster. Uh, you can have mag uh, fusion magic change as well. Um, I didn't include it because I rarely use it. But basically what you do is you combine these two monsters into one big one, which has the combined stats, but he, um, or both of them, go away after three turns or something. And uh, it's the same one for the, the magic change weapon. 
basically it goes away after a while. But you you can get one really powerful character for three turns, or you can have uh, sort of several characters for um, as long as you want. And as you can see, his hit uh, or his size is actually a cross of five. Um, so this just allows you to uh, sort of create combinations of characters but it also has the problem that you have to level several characters and even though leveling in this game is pretty easy and pretty fast um, it obviously becomes more and more tedious the more you want it and um, equipment is actually more rare than uh, levels because anyone can go level uh, basically what you do is you give them a good AOE skill and you grind enemies um, which you can do indefinitely um, but the equipment is much harder to come by um, so yeah as you start out you basically only have a couple of uh, story characters like Velvatoris who's clipping into the wall and Fenric or Fenrish I don't know um, but then as you defeat enemies in the story missions here um, yeah here is the bonus basically if you do a lot of damage and a lot of combos or you destroy a lot of different colored blocks you will go down uh, the bonus list I'm level 3 or 4 or whatever I'm sorting out so you can see I'm just getting a few different items here um, and yeah there it shows up so ghost is available to create um, basically what you do is you create first you get the ghost when you kill them in the story missions and then you get that ghost to level um, I don't know level 20 or 80 or whatever and then you unlock the next level and uh, then the next one and most of the um, different characters have six levels of their job or whatever you want to call it so they have a bit, uh, a few different skills depending on level and things like that. Um, here's another part of the game which I really like, which is basically there's a bunch of these cutscenes, sort of um, one after you finish each of the story missions and one before you start the missions, uh, meaning that there's a bunch of story if you want to look at it, but um, you can also skip all of these cutscenes, they're basically just standing around uh, with speech bubbles. There are a few uh, sort of fancier ones, I think I have one, or a part of it as well. Um, basically where they show up with portraits and a bit fancier backgrounds and stuff like that. Um, but basically what this means is that you don't have to create a bunch of video to uh, explain the different uh, missions and the story and stuff like that you can just have it run in game and even though it has voice most of it which um, it actually has a ton of voice um, the game has a ton of content because of the lack of uh, uh, you know high quality video and stuff like that which takes a lot of space um, so here I'll start running through sort of the more complex parts of the game um, and as you can see here, I have this character Desco, which is pretty cool. Um, she's level 4806, and she has um, four different items. A Basilisk Eye, which is a monster type weapon, and then you have three slots for um, armor and boots, and um, there's a ribbon, which gives her... Um, Basically, she hits every time. She can never miss with uh, with attacks. And then armor, which gives defense. And there's a ton of different stats, which I really don't know what they're doing. Like, def is armor. Res is against magic. Speed. Uh, evasion, maybe? And then you have movement speed. You have jumping height. Range. Throwing range. Um, counter attacks and critical hit um, so at the bottom here you can see this item is level 196 um, I think the max is 300 but I haven't gotten that far on any weapon 
Um, so you basically add your default stat and your attack stat from your weapon and any other attack stats. And then you also have um, these guys, which are innocents. Um, basically what you do is you go into the item world and you defeat innocents and you uh, level them up by combining uh, guys with the same name. So physician gives you health, I think. Um, tutor is intelligence. Coach is health. I don't know. As I said, I'm not really good at the stats here. I just have a sort of basic idea. Um, but yeah, um, the innocents themselves also level, um, so you can get up to level, yeah, twice times nine 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 nine, um, which is the highest level. Marksman is hit. Gladiator is attack damage, or attack stat. Um, so there are a ton of different things to max out in this game. Like, if you want to get the perfect character, I have no idea how much time you'd have to spend. I've put something like 60 or 70 hours into this game, as of uh, the recording of this. Um, so, I haven't even unlocked the... Uh, the X, no, not the X dimensions. It's called something else, Chaos World, or uh, I can't really remember. But yeah, you also have the um, campaign uh, headquarters, which basically what you're doing is you're placing these uh, sort of structures that give you different bonuses. Like the pyramid here gives everyone in these um, squares. Uh, they basically share experience, um, or maybe it's the other way around. Basically what you're doing is you get experience and then you get um, you get sort of mana. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, you get mana. So one of these share mana, one of them share experience, and mana is used to buy new skills. They're used to create characters, as you can see in this case. If you go into the um, character creation screen, you can see all of the different jobs. And as you can see here, I've unlocked um, maybe up to level 6. I'm not sure. But yeah. So you have your human classes and you have your monster classes. And what... Yeah, I've unlocked all of them. And what someone with high mana can do is create, um, create new characters. So I think I will show the menu soon. But yeah. As you can see, there are a ton of different jobs, and I haven't really unlocked all of the levels. Like, I'm not using many monsters, as you can see. So there's something like 40 different characters or character classes you can do. Um, you can also reincarnate, meaning you can um, level all over again. But since you can improve your um, your sort of base stats as well as your percentage stats, which increase as you level. You can basically have 300% uh, in everything. I will go back and see if it... Uh, maybe it's another... It's another menu. I think it comes up somewhere around here. Uh, hello. Yeah, here it comes up. Um, as you can see here, there's aptitude. Uh, which you can boost by, I think it's 30% per reincarnation or something, by going into the character world, as you can see here. Um, so you can boost um, subjects, basically uh, different skills. Um, boost movement, which is good. Um, throwing range, which is also amazing. Um, for throwers especially. And then you can learn skills and ability. These are just basically passive skills. You can only use two of them at a time. Um, but yeah. Um, so you can boost these. First one is 5,000, next one is 50, and then 500,000 mana. So there are ways to boost uh, this. And every time you reincarnate, you lose all of your experience and all of your mana. Meaning that, yeah maxing characters is going to take you a long, long time. And that's basically the idea of this game. Like, finishing this game um, is probably not possible because there's just so much to do. 
And while some games are uh, fun to play, like uh, fun moment to moment, like Super Meat Boy for instance, um, this game is more like uh, crack or an MMO. Uh, basically what it does, it's it has infinity things to do and it always rewards you for your time. Um, yeah, as you can see here, I have hosted some with these, so they have to reincarnate before uh, before leveling up again. Um, but yeah, this game has, um, because of the procedurally generated uh, dungeons in the item world and the... Um, yeah, sorry, can't remember what they're called. Uh, but there are actually uh, more difficult versions of the... Um, the maps that you can unlock, uh, but since I haven't, um, I'm not quite familiar with them. Um, but yeah, as you go along, you can also unlock the the X dimensions or the cross dimensions, I think they're called, uh, which are basically just more difficult versions of the uh, story missions, which rely more on sort of weird stats and weird tactics. And as you can see, in this case, I'm hoping I show you at least, you have these um, blocks. First there's level 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. All the way up to this um, metal one here. Because as you can see, you can uh, you can actually destroy blocks, but you cannot destroy these iron crates. Uh, so what you need for this mission is to actually have someone with a good enough uh, jumping stats uh, to get onto the second last platform and kill the guy or girl uh, on the last one. Um, I haven't finished this one because I don't have a character that can jump that high because I think you have to get uh, much more uh, jumping power than I currently do or wear um, shoes which give you better jumping. For some reason if you wear three pairs of shoes you jump better. Um, uh, but yeah, these are actually more interesting to me uh, because they use more um, sort of trickery and uh, throwing blocks and lifting blocks because there are timed blocks as well. Like there are timed blocks which just kill you straight out uh, game over if you don't uh, lift them up within a certain number of turns. Uh, because if you hold them over your head, you will uh, or they will not count down at all. Um, so this is more of the uh, item world. You can basically choose to either go the sword route which levels the item or you can go the smiley face route which is up here uh, which boosts um, the innocence. So what you want to do is you put your innocence in a bad item and then you level it up a bunch of times and then you move your innocence back onto an item boosted item instead. Uh, yeah, here I'm chaining the colors a bit. Um, not super much. You can do combos of several thousand blocks. Uh, but yeah, this splits and then every this is every five levels and then every ten levels you get a boss. Uh, in this case it's this dancing guy. Dancing queen maybe? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, this is um, sort of a more fancy layout with more levels and you pretty much can't throw really high. Uh, so you can't throw from down here all the way up, but since I have so much movement on my main characters it doesn't matter. Um, so you go up, you kill this guy, which levels your item even more, and then you go into the uh, weapon thingy and you boost everything. So what you can do is you can create an infinite, uh, maybe not infinite, but uh, you can create like several hundred characters and you can have uh, several hundred items and you can level them up from level 0 to level 300. Um, and here I'm just showing you like it's leveled up, you did 10, uh, I skipped 10 stages and I killed um, the item general and I got 15 more levels on my phoenix bow. Um, so yeah, this is more like 
crack in that it has a million things to do. Uh, in this case I found a treasure map or tortured someone for a treasure map. Um, meaning that I can go into the map and I kill the um, kill the chest giving me a ship part because you can not only go into the item world and the character world you can also go into the pirate world um, basically where you you create your own pirate ship um, which looks really weird like it's made out of cats and sharks and ships and cannons and whatever you find because the different ship parts give you different stats and then um, every 20 levels you clear in the item world on an item you get to become a pirate a reverse pirate of that um, oh it started over but yeah as I said there are a ton of different things to do and I tend to like this game most for the story which is definitely silly um, in many different cases um, but I sort of enjoyed it most of the time you have your sort of more puzzle maps that don't rely so heavily on stats uh, which is a pretty cool challenge um, but yeah the game is more about the constant reward and the different all the different things you can do basically makes this more of a maybe not open world sort of game but you can do whatever you want to it doesn't matter if you proceed with the uh, story or not you can always go somewhere else and do something else um, so it allows you to do whatever you want basically it's sort of a playground with a fancy sort of mechanic where you um, you have a basic strategy um, and unless you become super overpowered the game is actually still interesting um, so it's not a game that I would recommend to uh, lots of players um, but if you can get it really f cheap just check it out for the procedurally generated content which I think is pretty amazing um, and because I hyped the Humble Bundle last week I will actually be giving out my extra copy of Mark of the Ninja. Um, so leave a comment down below and give me feedback on if you want more sort of the drawing uh, content where I try to go more in depth or if you want me to do more of these uh, video uh, design videos I suppose. Um, and I will pick a random winner from one of the comments on this video um, sometime when I remember um, I have a bunch of different games um, like I bought the Humble Bundle and um, so I have like uh, Mark of the Ninja uh, I actually don't remember I have them in a word file but I don't want to bring up my entire desktop to show you but yeah I have something like six different games which I will be giving away because I don't really use them much but leave a comment down below and you'll have an opportunity to win Mark of the Ninja if you didn't buy the Humble Bundle which you should have so this has been Jonas with Disgaea 4 thanks for watching